Oh, <laughs> hey! <laughs> All right. How are you, man? Good. good. Uh -huh. Down. Uh huh. Up. Uh huh. Isn't that cool? That oh, is cool. With my right foot, I can raise it up, lower it down. Uh -huh. For the first time in 45 years since uh, you know Vietnam, I'm able to use my left hand, which is very emotional mm -hmm. at times. When mm -hmm. I first did it, yeah. golly, it was so great to pick something up and hold it. Uh -huh. It sounds simple, but it was everything. No, no. I'm flexing my wrist right now. Now I'm standing on my toes to close my hand. Uh -huh. this, this device is completely modular. So if you've lost a hand, we can give you a hand. If you've lost three quarters of your arm, we can give you three quarters of an arm. Mm -hmm. It's the most advanced prosthetic arm the world has ever there seen. There you go. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is transformational. Uh, obviously, as uh, has been noted, we've never seen anything like this before. And um, Fred Downs has been through an awful lot of uh, these uh, different possibilities over, over many years. Um, but yeah, all of the intelligence is, is, is in the hand, and, and the processing that goes on is there in the hand. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the reasons why that's important is that it enables us to create this modular system. Mm -hmm. If we had distributed the, the electronics throughout the arm, we wouldn't be able to have that modular capability. The Dark Robotics Challenge was inspired by the Fukushima disaster after the, the tsunami in Japan. They had a very, very serious problem with the nuclear reactors, with heating, with hydrogen, with explosions. So we set up this challenge. It started with software work, and then it evolved into what was called the DARPA Robotics Challenge Trials. This is science fact. What's in Hollywood is science fiction. And the fact is that I have many operators here conducting path planning on a computer, communicating to the robot through a tether, and telling the robot how to navigate step by step through this simulated rubble field. And it takes them you know, anywhere from three to 10 minutes to do path planning for that robot to take one or two steps. This robot had to do things like remove rubble. It had to turn valves. It had to put a fire hose on. This thing had to be able to get itself up and down a ladder about 10 feet, which was interesting. It would take them a long time to do that. We had Virginia Tech. We had a team from MIT. We had a team from Carnegie Mellon. Uh, we had a team from Jet Propulsion Laboratory. We had a team from NASA. Uh, we had two teams from Korea, one team from Japan, a team from Western Colorado that was funded by venture capitalists and some high school students. Imagine a, a, a factory floor or a warehouse yeah. floor. I want to move objects.